There is a lot of different types of matter in the universe, and some of this matter seems to be hidden from us. You already probably know about the mysterious dark matter, but there's actually a lot of other matter that the scientists can't seem to locate. Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be talking about a study that may have located some of this unusual missing matter known as missing baryon problem, which essentially refers to a strange inconsistency between how much of matter we expect in the universe and how much of it we're actually seeing. But first of all, just once again, we're not really talking about the detection of dark matter. Dark matter is a completely different beast by itself. As a matter of fact, in one of the recent videos I've talked about how we know that the recent observations suggest that approximately 61% of everything in the universe is the mysterious dark energy, and the rest is the combination of dark matter mixed with regular matter. But in this regular matter, that's where things don't really add up, at least if you were to look around the universe, which the scientists have done quite extensively using these three major telescopes, with the last observations, the most accurate ones, being from the Planck telescope, which officially ended its operation back in 2013. So essentially, by observing using these telescopes, the scientists were able to create a relatively accurate representation of how much of different stuff there is in the universe. And it seems that approximately 4.8% of everything is or should be visible matter. The stuff that stars, galaxies, and of course you and I are made from. But the previous analysis with Planck telescope was essentially responsible for producing the most accurate cosmic microwave background map and also essentially looked at all of this ancient light to come up with all of these results. It didn't really look at visual matter, it didn't really look at all of these stars and galaxies and everything we can actually see. So if you were to look at the galaxies and all of these stars and all of the visible matter in the universe, that's when something doesn't actually add up, because about 40% of all of the stuff that should be there is missing. And this problem has been known to scientists for a pretty long time. And that's essentially what we refer to as the missing baryon problem, where about half of this stuff is completely invisible to us. And obviously there are a lot of different propositions and possible solutions to where this matter could be hiding. Like for example, maybe, and most likely, it's hiding between galaxies in the intergalactic space. Because today we know that this stuff here, it's not actually emptiness, it's not vacuum. It's just really difficult to see what's going on there. But it could also be hidden in things like, for example, black holes, different difficult to see rogue planets, and a lot of other stuff like interplanetary and interstellar dust. So trying to pinpoint the exact location for all of this missing matter has kind of been a mystery because we couldn't really figure out where it is. But one of the most likely solutions and also one of the most likely places where we can find a lot of this matter is in the so-called galactic web. The very hard to see, but nevertheless extremely huge and very powerful web that spreads through the whole universe and essentially connects all of the galaxies and everything in those galaxies together. This is something we've been kind of studying slowly, trying to understand how it works and also trying to understand how it forms, but it's very difficult to see this stuff. Mostly because it's made out of huge amounts of dark matter, very large amounts of gas, but practically no stars whatsoever. In other words, it doesn't create any light that we can easily observe from planet Earth. Yet all of these supercomputer simulations and all of the theories so far suggest that it contains a lot of dark matter and a lot of gas, just like you see in this simulation from the beautiful Illustris project. It's also sometimes referred to as the warm, hot intergalactic medium, and is basically this invisible part of the universe that is always there, and it's always interacting with everything, yet we don't really know much about it, and we also obviously don't really see much coming from it. But all of the studies in the past decade or so have actually found individual signs of its existence and have definitely proven that it's there and that it actually is much more massive and much, much more influential than we originally believed. And it also serves as a kind of a foundation or a structure for all of the new galaxies as they form and as they establish themselves in the universe. In other words, this cosmic web, this huge, huge structure is absolutely crucial for not just the existence of different galaxies, but also for their creation and for guiding their formation across the universe. Without this, our galaxy would not exist at all. But how could we possibly see this? Well, there could be potentially different techniques, and the scientists believe that maybe we can actually see this through various gravitational effects, for example. So maybe through observations of various microgravity lenses or gravitational lensing effects from really large structures. 
But for the actual cosmic web, it's somewhat difficult to actually see this because a lot of this gas is very diffuse and all of this gravity is spread through very, very large volumes. We could maybe find, for example, hidden rogue planets or black holes this way, but definitely not these large strings of cosmic gas. And so instead, the scientists usually focus on trying to detect very minute emissions of, for example, X-rays that could be produced when this gas interacts with something else in the vicinity. Although in this case, any kind of observation and any kind of emission would be extremely, extremely tiny in comparison to anything else we've seen. And on top of this, most of this gas that's present in these cosmic webs will never actually interact with anything. It will stay as just neutral gas for the entirety of the existence of the universe, mostly because it's really, really far away from everything. So if anything interacts here, it usually happens really rarely and usually produces just very minute quantities of, for example, X-rays. But nevertheless, it does seem to happen, and this is exactly what the scientists in the recent study decided to focus on. By using a lot of the data from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, that essentially contains the largest ever made 3D map of the entire universe, and contains the information about a lot of galaxies, a lot of gas between these galaxies, and of course a lot of other stuff in between them, the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below used a very rigorous statistical analysis to detect the signs of these X-rays emanating from what seems to be the cosmic web where all of this matter is hidden. In other words, they were able to discover these X-ray emissions coming from all of this hot gas located inside the cosmic web. And here it seems they were able to identify about 15,000 different cosmic filaments located across the universe. And they used a combination of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey and the ROSAT-2 survey, which allowed them to both detect the X-ray emissions and also to, to some extent, measure the temperature of this intergalactic gas. And what this, of course, confirms is that, well, first of all, that the cosmic web is definitely there, of course, but also it shows us that a lot of this hidden mass that we couldn't find before, approximately 40% of all of the visible matter, is essentially just spread across really, really large amounts of empty space. Well, not really empty anymore, because that's where the gas is located. And as I mentioned before, because the density here is so extremely low, most of this gas will never really turn into anything and will never really interact with anything only some of this gas gets to interact and create some of these emissions. For the most part, as the universe keeps expanding and getting larger and larger, it just means that all of this gas will become even more isolated than before. And the tiny emissions that they were able to observe most likely are created by the combination of dark matter and some of the gas present there, as it essentially is being funneled into smaller spaces and gets to interact with some of the particles. But because here we're talking about millions and millions of light years across, essentially bigger than Milky Way galaxy itself, these interactions are still very minuscule and are only visible when you really look at them by combining about 20 years of different data from different telescopes. Which is really the only reason the scientists in this paper were able to identify these emissions. If you were to just look at them with a, for example, X-ray telescope, such as the famous Chandra X-ray Observatory, and if you were to just look at this location for like a few hours, you would actually not see anything whatsoever. You really have to combine data from many different observations in order to be able to discern anything in these locations. But by doing so, we now have a pretty good idea where the matter is hiding and a pretty good confirmation that these cosmic webs and this extremely large web across the universe is essentially responsible for a lot of different unusual effects we're observing in the universe, including possibly some emissions we couldn't explain before, but also for keeping a lot of hidden matter inside of it. But unfortunately for now, that's kind of all we've discovered and that's kind of all we know. Once we learn more about the cosmic web or about the mysterious hidden matter in the universe, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, well, looks like we might have solved another mystery in the universe, but more confirmations and more additional studies will definitely make this either a fact or possibly a mistake that needs to be corrected. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.